Let's start by looking at variables. And the idea behind a variable is that it's just kind of a box that holds something. It's a container that holds anything you want in JavaScript. It can hold some text, it can hold a number, it could hold uh, a function, it could hold a collection of information like an array or an object, it could hold a re reference to an HTML document or an HTML element. So a variable really is just a container. So variables are really, really helpful when doing our websites and writing our code because they allow us to sort of hold on to information and get at it later on. So if I want to make a variable in JavaScript, I type the word var, that means new variable, and then I just come up with whatever I want to name it. So let's call it my name, like this. So you'll notice here that our variables have to follow a naming convention. So our variables can definitely not have spaces in them. They can't have dashes in them. They could have underscores if you wanted, uh, but most people don't generally put underscores when writing JavaScript. Normally we follow a convention here called camel case. And that is the first word in the variable has a lowercase, but every subsequent word has a capital letter like this. So that's called camel case. So this is just a name that I completely made up for my variable. So the word var is built into JavaScript. That's the declaration that says we're creating a new variable. And then right here, this is the name of my container. I just called it my name. And now I'm going to put some content into it. So I'm going to write an equal sign like this, and then I can put whatever content into it that I want. Now, if I wanted to put my name in there, since my name is a piece of text, that means I have to write some quotes, and then I can just write my name like this, and there we go. So now you can see that I've taken this piece of text and I've put it inside of this variable. Now that I have that variable, I can use it in other places. So say, for instance, I could write an alert, and in here I type my name like this, and now if I go and refresh, and do my alert, you can see what pops up in the alert is what is inside of the variable. So right here, I've taken, well, I've taken the name, my name Thomas, I've put it into this variable here. And when I do my alert now, it's writing Thomas, you'll notice that I don't have quotes around this here. And that's because this is a variable. If I was to put quotes around this, like this, now it's become just a chunk of text, it's not a variable anymore. If I do the alert again, you can see now the alert is spitting out my name. It's literally spitting out what is inside of the quotes. So without the quotes, I'm spitting out the content of the variable itself, which is what we're doing right here. So I've created a variable here. This is called a string in JavaScript or many programming languages because it's just a piece of text. So let's say um, I wanted to make another variable called my last name. So I will just make that equal to Bradley like this. And now I have two variables, my name and my last name. So it's Thomas and Bradley. If I wanted to say combine those together, I can actually use a plus. So when I'm dealing with strings, if I use a plus, uh, that will combine the two strings together like this. So now the alert is going to say my name and my last name. So I'll go and refresh. And you can see here it is like that it's spitting out the content of the first variable right here. And it's spitting out the content of the second variable right here. So both of those things together. Now I think ideally, it'd be nice if there was a space in behind in between there. So you have to remember that computers are a little bit stupid. And they're very, very literal. We have not actually told it to put a space here. So it it's not going to know. Yes, it's true that there's spaces here and here, but that's part of the syntax itself. It's not actually part of the content of the variables. This variable and this variable don't have spaces inside them, so the browser doesn't know to output a space. So I could go into Thomas up here and put a space after my name and refresh, and you can see now it's combining them together with a space in between, which totally works. But now I've kind of made this variable have this extra space in here, which really isn't part of my name. So I don't think it should be in there. So I'm going to delete that. But what I can do is I can then use the plus here to combine that together with a space. So this now says, take the content of the my name variable, add it with a space right here, which I've just put in quotes, and then add it together with the last name variable. So I'll refresh and the alert and here we go. We've now combined the three variables together. 
this is a string variable of Thomas. And then we have another string right here that's just a space. And then we've combined that with another variable string called Bradley. So I've got my variables here. They're holding containers of or they're containers of information. And inside these variables, I've combined, I've put strings, and we can use the plus to combine strings together. So we've combined the string inside of this variable with just another generic string that happens to be a space, and then another string that is my last name.